Okay, so um, uh, the class notes um, for this completed square did not come out, so I'm going to have to uh, redo this. But um, we'd, we'd do the same problems that we did in class. Um, we started talking about uh, completing the square and the idea behind completing the square. And so in a previous course, you learned how to square a binomial. So when you square a binomial, remember that's the binomial times itself. So this right here means x plus 5 times itself. And so if I FOIL this out, I get x times x is x squared. The outer is uh, 5x. Now remember, this is a binomial times itself, so you should notice that the outer and the inner should always be the same term, since the two binomials are the same. And then uh, positive 5 times a positive 5 is a positive 25. Combining like terms, combining like terms, I get x squared plus 10x plus 25. And so this binomial squared is x squared plus 10x plus 25. Okay, now, the idea here is this. So if you look at this, whenever you square a binomial, that trinomial you end up with, that trinomial you have, this is called a perfect square trinomial. A perfect square trinomial. All right, and um, here's the idea of why it's called a perfect square trinomial. Remember, your perfect squares, your perfect squares, are 1, 4, uh, 3 squared is 9, uh, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, and so on. So those are your perfect squares, an infinite number of them. And the reason they're called perfect squares is, is because I can square a number and I'll get these, these numbers. So 1 squared is 4, 4 is 2 squared, uh, 9 is 3 squared, um, uh, 16 is 4 squared, five, uh, 25 is 5 squared, and so on. So each of those perfect squares is a square of a number. So that's why it's called a perfect square. So the same idea here. So x squared plus 10x plus 25, which is a square of a binomial, so that's why it's called a perfect square trinomial, because you get a, a square of a binomial. So because you get a square of a binomial, or you get a binomial squared. All right, so it's going to look like something squared equal a number. So some algebraic expression equals some real number. All right, now the idea that you're going to use is this. So in, in a little while, when you start uh, solving quadratic equations using completing the square. So the idea is going to be this. On one side of the equation, you're going to have your variables. You're going to have your variable terms. And the question is, what do I need to add to these two terms here? What number do I need to add here? so that this trinomial is a perfect square trinomial. So that's the idea. So you want to add something, you want to add something to these two terms so, you, so that this trinomial becomes a perfect square trinomial. In other words, I can write it as something squared. All right, so let's think about this. Remember, you want a 25 here. You want a 25. So first of all, you're going to learn that, that um, the x squared has to be a 1. So if it's anything other than a 1, like a 2 or 3, then in the equation, when you have this equation, um, now this is not an equation here, but in, in, in the next problem, those will be equations, you would have to divide every term by that number. All right, but this is a 1, so we're good. And in this, in this lesson, all these will be 1s. Okay, so then what you do next is you take the coefficient of x, the coefficient of x, which is 10, positive 10, and I always, you're going to always divide by, and it's always, always divide by 2. Now this one's a nice one because 10 is even, and so 10 divided by 2 is just uh, an integer 5. Alright, now once I get that number, then what you're going to do is you're going to square that number. So 5 squared is 25, and that's, that's remember, that's what we wanted, 25, so that's what you add here. Okay, so again, to complete the square on the variable terms, you're going to make sure that, first of all, this coefficient is of x squared is 1. If it's 1, then you're going to go to the next step. I'm going to take the coefficient of x, which is a positive 10. I'm going to divide it by 2. Well, 10 divided by 2 is 5. And then once I get that number here, I'm going to square it, and I get 25, and that's what you're going to add here. All right, so, so remember, uh, 
Um, if you do this correctly, whatever you add here is going to make this this trinomial a perfect square trinomial. So I can factor this as x plus 5 squared. All right, now, whatever this number is is what you're going to see here. So x times x is x squared. 5 times 5 is 25. And when I FOIL it, the out and the inner will give me 10x. All right, let's look at, uh, let's start solving um, quadratic equations by completing the square. Okay, so um, solve by completing the square. All right, now number one, you have x squared plus 4x equal 12. Now, first of all, recognize that these problems here are going to be quadratic. So notice that this is quadratic, so this is a quadratic equation. All right, and in a previous course, you solved uh, a quadratic equation either by factoring, but not all polynomials are factorable. So if it's not factorable, if you couldn't factor this, then you would, uh, what we did last semester was use the quadratic formula. But another method to use is called completing the square. Now, for the most part, the quadratic formula is more efficient. But you got to practice with completing the square because at some point in the course, you're going to need it when we start talking about circles and uh, when we start talking about graphing quadratic functions because you need to rewrite a quadratic function in vertex form. And then to rewrite in vertex form, you have to be able to complete the square. In order to write a circle, equation of a circle, in standard form, you have to be able to complete the square. So you need to practice, you need to practice these steps in completing a square on a quadratic equation. Okay, so step one basically says this. You're going to rewrite the equation by placing the constant term to the right of the equal sign and the variable terms on the left. So in other words, get the variables on one side, constants the other. And leave a blank on each side because you're going to be adding a number to each side. So that's step one. Um, now, also keep in mind that that uh, if the coefficient of x squared, this, this bullet here, the second one, if the coefficient of x squared is not 1, you would have to divide every term by that number. So this was a 2, you would say divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. All right, but uh, we're just going to be dealing with coefficients being 1. So basically for us right now, this is not going to be used. All right, but, but if you do have a situation where this is 3, 4, negative 6, you divide everything by that number. Because you, you do need x squared to be, coefficient of x squared to be a 1 in order to complete the square. All right, so um, our first, of, so step one, you got to make sure that all the variable terms are on the left and the constants are on the right, and, and they are. Now I'm going to rewrite it because I need a space here. So I'm going to rewrite this thing, so I get x squared plus 4x equal 12. Now remember, you're going to be adding something to both sides. And so whatever you add to both sides, whatever you add to both sides, remember you want to, whatever you add here, you want to make sure that's, that's going to be a perfect square trinomial. All right, so we got we got to complete the square to get a perfect square trinomial. So uh, coefficient of x squared is one. Then remember what we did next was we took the coefficient of x. Coefficient of x here is a positive four. Once I get the coefficient of x, you must always divide by two. Now this is an easy one because four divided by two is a nice is, is an integer two. Okay, once I get that two, okay, that's next up here. So you're going to take the coefficient of x, and you're going to divide by 2, and then you're going to square. So once you divide by 2, you're going to square this number. So 2 squared gives me 4. All right, once you get that, the next step is to add that number to both sides of the equation. So you're going to say plus 4, plus 4. All right, now if you do this correctly, this should now be a perfect square trinomial. So in other words, you should be able to factor this as a binomial squared, or you should be able to rewrite this as a binomial times itself. All right, so let's see what we get. So remember, we want to factor x squared plus 4x plus 4. So, so basically, basically, you're going to say what times what's x squared. Well, that's easy, x times x. So 
So when you complete the square, this will always be x times x. Now the last sign's positive, that means these signs in here have to be the same, and they have to be the middle sign, because, because if, um, they have to be the same, because a positive times a positive is a positive, a negative times a negative is also a positive. And the sign you use will always be this middle sign, because I want this to be a positive 4x. If they were both negative, it would be negative. So I want them to be positive. So be x plus, x plus. And then, remember, the uh, if, if this is a perfect square trinomial, you factor it as a binomial times itself. So if these two binomials have to be the same binomial, then these two numbers here have to be the same. So what number times itself is 4? The only possibility is 2 and 2. And so that's what goes here. And again, all you had to do is just take this number here, this right here, or this, doesn't matter which one, and just add it here. All right, and then next thing you do is add the other side, so 12 plus 4 is 16. All right, now remember, once you get something that looks like a, uh, a, a algebraic expression squared equal a number, a real number, then you're going to take the square root, you can use a square root property. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this, so x plus 2 squared equal 16. I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Don't forget the plus or minus. So the square and the square root undo each other. So you get x plus 2 equal plus or minus 4. Now remember, um, the square root of 16, 16 is a perfect square, so that, that 4 here, is, we're going to get, we're gonna, since the square root disappeared, we're going to end up with rational solutions. So since these are rational solutions and not irrational, you're going to rewrite it, because you want to rewrite it as two separate rational solutions. So you're going to, you're going to um, say x plus 2 equal positive 4, x plus 2 equals a negative 4. And then notice um, you went from a quadratic equation to two linear equations. And so you just solve each linear equation. So you subtract 2 from both sides, combine like terms. I get x to be 4, subtract 2 is 2. Over here, subtract 2 from both sides. Combine like terms, and the positive 2 and the negative 2 is 0, I get x to be a negative 6. And so your solutions would be 2 comma negative 6, or negative 6, 2. Negative 6 comma 2. Alright, number 2. Alright, number 2, you have x squared plus 6x minus 5 equals 0. So again, the first step is to, um, make sure you're using this, the first step is to um, uh, make sure that the variables on one side constants on the other. Right. So, and then uh, leave a space so you can add some number, uh, add a number. So x squared plus 6x, I'm leaving a space equal, when I bring the negative 5 over, it becomes a positive 5. All right, now again, the coefficient of x squared is 1. If it wasn't 1, if this was, let's say, a 2, a 3, whatever, you would divide every term by that number. All right, so it is a 1, though. So the next step is to take coefficient of x, which is a positive 6. Always divide by 2. Again, this is a nice one because 6 is even. 6 divided by 2 is 3. Once I get that 3, remember the next step. Once you get that 3, then you square the result. So I'm going to square 3. When I square 3, I get 9. And that's what you add to both sides. So plus 9 plus 9. So what you do to the left side, you do to the right side. Now again, this right here should now be a perfect square trinomial. If you did this correctly, that should be a perfect square trinomial, meaning I can write this as a binomial times itself. And so you just got to figure out what that binomial times itself is. Well, that one, these are easy to deal with because this is always going to be an x squared. So that's x times x. The last sign's positive. So it's always going to be positive. This is always going to be positive. So these signs are always going to be the same. So, so you just got to figure out what it needs to be. What's well, always going to be that middle sign. So plus, plus. And then if it's a binomial times itself, if you're doing this correctly, if this is a perfect square trinomial, you're going to get a binomial times itself. So that means that these, this number here and this number here needs to be the same. So you ask yourself, what times itself is 9? Well, that's 3. And again, all you had to do is just take this number here, and that's what you would put here. So you'd say x plus 3. All right, and so then you add 9 and 5, and you're going to get 14. And so now this is, 
this is um, of the form some algebraic expression squared equal number, a real number, and so then you're going to use the square root property. So when I use the square root property, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Don't forget the plus or minus. And the square and the square root undo each other. So you get x plus 3 equal plus or minus the square root of 14. And now we're at the situation where um, we ask ourselves, can a simple of that square root 14? The only perfect square that goes into 14 is 1. So no other perfect square will go into 14. So I cannot simplify the square root of 14. So this is going to be, so since, since I still have square root, this is going to be irrational. So if it's irrational, you, all you're going to do is just uh, write it in compact form, that one form. Um, so you can just subtract 3, combine like terms. So in other words, you're just going to write it as negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 14. And so that will be the answer there. On my math lab, you would say x equal negative 3 plus the square root of 14, comma, negative 3 minus um, square root of 14. Okay, number three, you have x squared minus 7x minus 8 equal 0. Okay, so again, first step is to rewrite this so that way the variables on one side, constants on the other. So I'm going to get x squared minus 7x equal, and then negative 8, when I bring it over, when I add 8 to both sides, really adding 8, plus 8 plus 8, you get 8. So that's what it's really doing. Right, and so 8 and a negative 8 is 0. Now the next step is this. You're going to have to add some number here and some number here. So that way this is a perfect square trinomial. So, so the x squared, the coefficient is 1. So we're just going to be dealing with 1 in this part. Um, now you take the coefficient of x. The coefficient of x is a negative 7. Make sure you say negative 7. Then the next step, remember, is divide by 2. Now, previously, the numerator was, was even, so that turned out to be a nice uh, integer. It was just an integer. So here, though, we don't get an integer. We get a, a, a fraction. So the next step still is to square both sides. So when I square both sides, remember, negative 7 halves times itself means this. And then multiplying the numerators together, negative 7 times a negative 7 is a positive 49. A positive 2 times a positive 2 is a positive 4, and so that's what this is. So negative 7 times negative 7 is 49. A positive 2 times a positive 2 is 4. So I'm going to add 49 fourths to both sides. All right, so remember, this is always going to be plus. Okay, now you need to factor this, this perfect square trinomial. So it should now be a perfect square trinomial. And again, just think about what you're doing. So a lot of students get thrown off by the fact that this is a fraction. Well, it's the same idea as before. Let's th just think about what you're doing. So I want to factor this trinomial. So remember, the last sign's positive. Last sign's positive. So, so that means that these signs in here have to be the same. And if this is a perfect square trinomial, both these binomials have to be identical. So the first is easy. x times x is x squared. Now, I would go directly to the last. Okay? So, so remember, you want this to be, uh, this has to always be positive. So these signs either going to be both plus symbols or subtraction symbols. And it's always this symbol right here. So they'll be both subtraction. And then, and then you got to figure out, well, what do these numbers need to be? Well, first of all, these numbers need to be identical. So what times what is 49? Well, 7 times 7 is 49. What times what is 4? Well, 2 times 2 is 4. So my fraction is going to be 7 halves. And again, remember, all you do, all you do is just take this number here and just rewrite it. All right, and always check yourself. Remember, you, uh, the question is, well, how do you know you, these are fractions? So how do you know that's going to be negative 7? How did you get to negative 7? Well, you formulate it out. Notice what happens. x times x is x squared. The outer, remember these are two binomials that are identical, so the outer and the inner should be the same. So the outer is a negative 7 halves x. The inner is a, positive, a negative 7 halves x again. And in the last, a negative times a negative is a positive. 7 halves times 7 halves, 7 times 7 is 49, 2 times 2 is 4. 
And now combining like terms, combining like terms, remember uh, coefficient here is the negative 7 halves plus another negative 7 halves. And remember when you add fractions, you got to have the same denominator. And these already have the same denominator. So my fraction is going to have that denominator, and all I do is just add the numerators. Negative 7 plus another negative 7 is a negative 14. And when I reduce, I get a negative 7, and that's what you wanted. And so this becomes x minus 7 halves squared equal. And over here, um, you, if you have access to calculators, use your calculator. So 8 plus 49 fourths, you're going to say... Um, you're going to say 8 plus 49 divided by 4 equal, and you get this decimal. Now, all of you should know this, how to read this. This is read as 20 and 25 hundredths. And remember, 25 hundredths, remember I'm saying this, 20 and 25 hundredths. And then 25 hundredths reduced is 1 fourth, and then you just write this mixed number, as an improper fraction. 4 times 20 is 80, 80 plus 1 is 81, so you get 81 fourths. Now again, if you didn't know that from a, from a uh, previous course, if you didn't know that, then all you do is you use your calculator's button, so you're going to use this. Okay, so you see where it says P or B here? Right above there, see it says F and D? So going from fraction to decimal, decimal to fraction, that's the idea there. So it's blue though, so you're going to press second, press the second button. See this showed up right here, second and then press P or B button, and that shows up. Then you press equal, and that's what you get, 20 and 1 fourth, and that's what we said earlier. You just got to, though, you have to change it to an improper fraction. That's what needs to go here, this improper fraction. All right, so you got to remember how to change a mixed number, that's a mixed number, to an improper fraction. So you say 4 times 20 is 80, 80 plus that 1 is 81, so 81 over 4. So it goes here. Now, if you didn't have access to a calculator, you would have to do this by hand. So you would have had to say 8, which is 8 over 1, plus 49 over 4. And the LCD here is 4, so you're going to write two fractions with that denominator. So those two fractions have to have the same denominator. So you're going to write equivalent fractions. So 8, one, 8 over 1 is equivalent to what number divided by 4? And so remember what we did in the previous course was we said 1 times what number is 4? Well, 1 times 4 is 4. But what I do to the denominator, I have to do to the numerator. So 8 times 4 is 32. You can always check yourself. 32 divided by 4 is 8. Now over here, the denominators are the same, so the numerators have to stay the same. And then all you do is just add 49 and 32 together, and you get 9, 9 plus 2 is 11, and then 4, 1, and 3 is 8. So you get 81. So this becomes 81 over 4. So either use your uh, calculator or you do it by hand. Okay, so now it's already in the form something, some algebraic expression squared equal a number. So we're going to take the square to both sides. All right, so take the square to both sides. Don't forget the plus or minus. And so the square and the square would undo each other. So you get x minus 7 halves equals plus or minus. Now these right here are both perfect squares. So the square root of 81 is 9 and the square root of 4 is 2. And notice since the square root disappeared, my solution is going to be rational. Rational solutions. So now, since they're rational, I need for you to split it apart. So you can tell me what those rational numbers are. So you're going to add, oops, sorry. So you're going to say x minus 7 halves equals a positive 9 halves. And then x minus 7 halves equals a negative 9 halves. And now notice I went from a quadratic equation to two linear equations. And so now you're going to add 7 halves to both sides. Combine like terms. I get x equal. All right, now notice that the denominators are the same, so that's going to be easy. The denominators are the same, just add their numerators. 9 plus 7 is 16. So I got 16 over 2, which equals 8. So that's your, one of your solutions. Over here, adding 7 halves to both sides. And then combine like terms. That's a zero here. I get x to be, um, then, uh, again, the numbers are the same, so I add the numerators. Negative 9 and a positive 7 is a negative 2, so you have negative 2 over 2, which is a negative 1. So your solutions 
x equal blank, you would say 8 comma negative 1 or negative 1 comma 8. All right, number 4. Let's suppose you had, um, all right, let's suppose you had x squared minus 3x minus 5 equal 0. Okay, so again, the first step, of, uh, um, first of all, the, the coefficient of x squared is 1, so that's going to be easy. Um, but the next step, then, is to get the variable terms by itself and the constant to the other side. So you can add 5 to both sides in your mind. That's what you're doing. So you're going to say x squared minus 3x plus you're going to add something here. So you're going to add something to both sides. So you've got to figure out what it is I've got to add. So that's where we complete the square, because you want this to be a perfect square trinomial. So we complete the square. So I take the coefficient of x, which is a negative 3. Not a positive 3, but a negative 3. And I divide by 2. Once I divide by 2, now notice this is not an integer, so it, it's, it's a rational number. It's just a fraction. You're going to square it, though. And so you're, you're, you're saying negative 3 halves times negative 3 halves. Well, a negative 3 times a negative 3 is a positive 9. A positive 2 times a positive 2 is a positive 4. So negative 3 halves squared is a positive 9 fourths. And so that's what you're going to add to both sides. So what you do to one side, you do the other. you got to keep it uh, balanced. So now this should be a perfect square trinomial. Now remember, just like in the previous example, students get confused when that's a fraction. But you shouldn't. it should not cause an issue because all you're doing is this. If that's a perfect square trinomial, these binomials are the same. So, so, and this, this is always going to be x squared. So this part's going to be easy. x times x is x squared. Now the last sign's positive. It's always going to be positive. So these signs in here will always be the same. Either they're going to be both plus symbols or, plus sub, or both subtraction symbols. And, if sub, and whatever it is, it's going to be this middle sign. So they're going to be both subtraction symbols. And then the other part's easy as well. The number you put here is easy as well. You, they have to be the same because, because this is a perfect square trinomial, meaning that, that you're going to factor it as a binomial squared. So a binomial times itself. Well, if, it's, if those two binomials are the same, these two numbers have to be the same. So what times itself is 9? Well, that's 3. What times itself is 4? Well, that's 2. So you get 3 halves. 3 halves. And remember... Basically, all you do is just take this right here, and you rewrite it. That's that's what you're. So check yourself like that. That's what you're gonna rewrite it as. And so now this should now be a perfect square trinomial. So I can factor it as a binomial squared, and that binomial is x minus three halves. Over here again, use your calculator. Five plus nine fourths. Um, if you do this correctly, you should get twenty nine over four. All right, so now we have something squared equal numbers. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides. I'm going to use the square root property. So that's a more efficient way of doing that. I'm just use the square root property. So when I take the square root of both sides, though, don't forget the plus or minus. So I get the square and the square root undo each other. So I get x minus 3 halves equals plus or minus. Now, remember, the square root of 29 over 4, the previous one was easy because that, that was, um, let me see if I can find it. That was not it. Let's see. That was the square root of 81 over 4. And so they were both perfect squares. Um, over here, they're not perfect, both perfect, perfect squares. So you, so if you think about it, though, you have the square root of 29 over 4, which whenever you take the square root of a fraction, you can actually write it as a quotient of each individual square root. Like that, square root of 29 divided by square root of 4. 29 is not a perfect square. The only perfect square that goes into 29 is 1, so that means I cannot simplify the square root of 29. I leave it at square root of 29. Square root of 4, though, 4 is a perfect square, so that's just 2. And so that's what goes here. Square root of 29 over 2. All right, so the only thing that, that the, the numerator is the only one to square root symbol in it. And so now, since, since the square root did not go away, I still have a square root. Um, um, th this is irrational. My solutions are irrational. So then all you do is just write in compact form. So just add 3 halves to both sides, just like this. And then combine like terms, and I get x to be 3 halves 
plus or minus the square root of 29 divided by 2. On my math lab, you probably uh, you would need to say um, 3 halves plus the square root of 29 over 2, comma, 3 halves minus the square root of 29 over 2. Now, I want you to notice, see how these denominators are the same? Then I can write it as one fraction. See how these are written as two fractions? I can write it as one fraction since the denominators are the same if I wanted to. You would say 3 plus or minus the square root of 29 all over 2. All over 2. Because that's what this is. 3 divided by 2 plus or minus the square root of 29 divided by 2. Okay, so that's that's going to take care of the, um, of the part of the class period that dealt with Completing, um, completing the square. Uh, let me see if I can find that page, that first page, this right here. So solve by completing the square.